This question is really, really a good one because it comes right along the tail end of some of the testimonials. It says, do you know the mechanism of action of pumping and what exactly are the benefits? Now, this is a great question for a variety of reasons, right? Because I think too, you know, when you talk to your doctor about pumping, sometimes they'll say, well, you know, if you pump, you could potentially really hurt yourself. You know, you could uh, bust some blood vessels, you could injure yourself and potentially get Peyronie's disease and so on and so forth. So what you're doing when you're using a penis pump or a vacuum erection device is you're actually using negative pressure to create what we call a fake erection, right? Or an artificial erection. And so the idea is you pump it up to where you used to be. You know, you look down and say, oh, okay, that looks about like where we normally are. And you let the vacuum sit there and, you, and, and, and while it's sitting there, it is actually causing a little bit of damage. So that is part of the process of healing. It's the same with shockwave. It's the same with, with pumping is that once you create what we call micro trauma or microvascular tears or what have you, what tends to happen is your body says, oh my goodness, we're injured, let's heal. And so it brings healing to an area that really wasn't having any healing um, beforehand. So if you think about it, think about it like this. If you've ever seen or been in a situation where maybe someone had their earlobe cut off or a top of their finger cut off, one of the things that we do when, we, when you're headed to the emergency room is we want you to probably try to save that piece. But we also, if you get there and it's scabbed over, what do we do? We denude it. We kind of scrape the scab off and get fresh bloody tissue so that we can actually sew it together and they heal, right? So... Really, we were talking about penile rehabilitation or erection rehab or an erection tune-up or whatever you want to call it. What you're actually doing is you are creating little microvascular damage there so that in your tissue brings growth factors and healing factors to the area. And then it says, okay, okay, team, let's get on it. we got to heal this area. And so that's what's happening when you're using shockwave. And that's also what's happening when you're using the pump. Now, the question also came through, Dr. Rachel, are there any potential side effects or negative things that can happen when you pump? And sure, absolutely. Anything can go wrong with anything that you do, right? Um, so I say that to say that potentially if you over pump or if you have a bleeding condition in already, or maybe you're on some blood thinners, what pumping can then do is create a bleeding situation um, uh, underneath the skin, under in the tissue. So that can be an issue. I've, we've had gentlemen who maybe end up with blood in their urine because they're pumping. We've had bruising because of pumping. Um, you, yes, and then someone else asked, what about Peyronie's disease? So what is Peyronie's? Peyronie's is basically scar tissue that starts to develop after an injury. You know, Peronis can develop after rough sex, after someone accidentally hits you, um, hits you um, on your, or your, your penile tissue. So um, yes, of course, injuries can happen. They can happen with anything. But I think too, this is why you gotta talk to your doctor and decide what's right for you. Do you have a bleeding disorder? Do you bruise easily? You know, is there something else going on that would preclude you from pumping? So that's why you always want to consult someone who works with you on a, on a daily basis or yearly basis who kind of knows you and knows where things are. But I'll tell you this, when guys have prostate surgery, when they have their prostate removed, the surgeons give them a pump before they even leave because they say, listen, it is very clear that pumping can help with penile rejuvenation. I call it rejuvenation, right? So, so let me um, just kind of share with you some of this because I always like for you to be informed to the point that then you can take this stuff back to your doctor and say, listen, I know you said this and this and this, but can we talk about it? Because this is what I'm reading. So this is an article back from 2020 that was in the Asian Journal of Andrology. And it's about the vacuum therapy prevents corporal venal occ occlusive dysfunction, and penile shrinkus, shrinkage in cavernosal nerve injury rat model, right? So the reason this is important is because this question comes through too. It says, hi, Dr. Rachel, do you have any suggestions for treating mild corporal fibrosis, 
Corporal fibrosis is basically something that if you live long enough, you're going to have corporal fibrosis. What it means is that the corpus cavernosum or the muscular tissue, the muscular vascular tissue that courses through your penile, your penis, you know, there's three areas of it. They actually start to get fibrotic or hard and stiff and they don't respond and, and, and open up and expand and fill up the way they used to. So that's what corporal fibrosis means. And the doctor also told him that he had venal occlusive dis dysfunction. So this basically means that the veins have become a little occ occluded, have little tiny clots kind of clotting off the area. And that has a tendency to happen in the crura of the penis, which is basically the area that kind of connects the penis to the tissue, right? It's kind of the sides of it, so to speak. So the question is, do you have any suggestions for that? Now, this goes back to just what we were talking about when it comes to pumping. Pumping actually helps with corporal fibrosis and veno-occlusive disease. And how does it do that? Now you're an expert on it because it creates little micro tears or microvascular damage that then your body starts to heal from. And that's ultimately what starts to repair and create what we call angiogenesis or neogenesis, which are new blood vessels to form to help supply the area. We also have this one. This is an article back from 1995. So this is kind of around the time where they just really started to realize, hey, listen, we got to make sure that any guy that comes out of surgery for prostate issues and that we've, we've messed with his prostate leaves with one of these things. This is an article titled The Efficacy of Vacuum Constriction Device, which is a pump, in patients with corporal venous occlusive dysfunction. Bing, 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 bing. That's the exact same thing you were asking about, right? Here it is. This is going to be your first line of treatment for that. Now, you know, of course, you if you've been tuning in, you know the system. You know, we've got to treat all of the different areas that could contribute to erectile dysfunction. But really starting with the tissue, because here's the thing, we boost your testosterone. If the tissue can't get erect, then the testosterone is going to do its thing everywhere else, but it's not going to do anything there. You know, we boost the blood flow, but if the blood flow can't get to the tissue and the tissue's still stiff and fibrotic, it's not going to make a difference, right? So that's ultimately why pumping becomes such a big part of this. You go and get shockwave, you go and get the P-shot. What are they all going to tell you to do? They're all going to tell you to pump each and every one of them. And so if I have a gentleman that I am, you know, that's in our, our intensive program and he's millions of miles away from me or thousands of miles away, how, how, how can I help? Well, I can help because I recognize that one of the first lines of treatment that you should employ is to figure out, can you pump? Is it okay for you to pump? Is your doctor okay with you pumping? Are you not on any blood thinner, thinners? Can you come off of the blood thinners? Have they left you on the blood thinners for too long? So all of this plays into it, right? And then here's another article. This one is about basically, so they realize, okay, so the pump is working pretty well with this rehab thing. Well, what happens if we add some Viagra into the mix? So they're taking Viagra every day and they're pumping after they've had their prostates removed. What happens then? Well, what they realize then is that basically we had even better outcomes with patients once they did both at the same time. So they, the, the, both of them help to rejuvenate and regenerate the tissue over time. All right, so, so that's my spiel on that. that. Oh, and then we have another one. This one is from 1997, still some of the beginning stages of understanding how important this stuff is. The external vacuum device in the management of erectile function, dysfunction. Now, I can even put some articles up here that talks about um, the hydro pump and using water and how clinically, patients start to say and feel and their partners start to feel that they're getting thicker and they're getting fuller and they're having better sex after they've been pumping on it. And so what I'm doing for that instead is just showing you some of the stuff that guys are saying in the chat. They're posting it on YouTube. They're posting it on Facebook. They're sending me messages. It's, it really is making a big impact.